trip to the great savanna of Central Africa, where you can find the largest distribution of grassland in the world. Almost half of all of Africa consists of the savanna. There's a huge diversity of plant and animal species, almost 500 species of birds, and the largest diversity of hoofed mammals in the world. The savanna is a grassland ecosystem found in many different places in the world, most notably in Africa, South America, India, and Australia. The specific species compositions vary among regions, but they are all dominated by grasses, with occasional trees that don't form a canopy. Savannas across the world share similar climates and are found up to 30 degrees from the equator. Make sure to put on a lot of sunscreen because the savanna is mostly grasses with little to no tree cover. Also, there's two distinct seasons, the dry and the wet. We're in the dry season right now, so there's not going to be a lot of clouds or shade. We're going to be in the direct sunlight most of the time. Make sure you stay hydrated. Looking at this graph, we can tell that the savanna is one of the hottest biomes. On average, the savanna receives around 150 centimeters precipitation per year, but much less during the dry season. Also, even though there's a yearly average of about 70 degrees Fahrenheit, today we're expecting a high of about 90 degrees. So stay hydrated. We'll refill the next watering hole. <laughs> this is a graph of year-round averages of precipitation in the savanna. Notice how little rain falls during the dry season, which occurs every year around September to May. Since it's late September right now, we shouldn't expect much rain at all. Look at this! The soil in the savanna is very nutrient-rich because of all volcanic eruption that happened thousands of years ago. The ash contains many different salts. During the rainy season, these salts are washed into the soil and harden, forming a layer underground called a hard pan. This layer helps the soil retain moisture for the grasses and also prevent trees from establishing their large roots. This is the boab, one of the few trees found on the savanna. It's adapted to the hot, dry climate by storing water in its huge trunk. The boab, along with other trees, shrubs, and grasses, are the primary producers of the savanna's food web. Some say that picking a flower from the boab will cause you to be attacked by a lion. Herbivores, also known as primary consumers, feed on the primary producers. In the African savanna, this includes elephants, giraffes, and zebras. Each of these animals has a special adaptation that helps it to survive, such as size, height, and agility. If we're lucky today, we might be able to see some apex predators like the lion and the cheetah. They're both secondary consumers and carnivores. Oh my god! Do you see that? Here's an encounter between a cheetah and an ostrich. Cheetahs are the fastest animal on land, reaching speeds of 75 miles per hour. Their prey is the ostrich, which is the fastest two-legged animal, able to maintain a speed of 30 miles per hour. Here are vultures waiting for its next meal. Animals like vultures and hyenas are scavengers, eating prey that is already dead. This starts the process of decomposition. Yeah. Decomposers, like dung beetles and worms, live in the soil and help to break down organic matter. Watch your step! There are lots of burrowing animals in the savanna. These animals who live in the ground help to create bioturbans, which is the beneficial reworking of the soil that helps plants thrive, and also helps to start the process all over again. Primary producers, primary consumers, secondary consumers, scavengers, and decomposers complete the food web of the African savanna. Each plant and animal occupies its own place in the levels of the savanna's trophic pyramid. From the lion to the tiny dung beetle, each organism is equally important in contributing to the balance of the ecosystem. We hope that you all have appreciated this wonderful journey through the savanna and become dedicated to help save it. Many of the animals we saw today are being hunted to extinction and their habitat is slowly shrinking. Okay, remember to be mindful ecotourists, be sure to minimize your impact and to respect the local people and their environment. Thank you so much for joining us today and hopefully we can preserve these amazing biomes for generations to come.